two great I, games. Thank you. I these, appreciate these it. These last two were just awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, can I you got a box? Can I have a box? A box for it? Thanks, man. Thank you. We've made all the announcements, so congratulations on a win. Give us an overview. You know, um, just wow. I mean, another, you know, really you know, great baseball game, I thought, by, by both teams. Another really, um, uh, not, I was going to say well, but I don't think that does it justice. Another great you know, pitching performance uh, by both clubs. You know, and I, I don't know how many times that happens where uh, both clubs pitch it so well two days in a row. Uh, but, you know, both, you know, Connor and I thought Dylan, you know, pitched today like Friday night aces in the, in the Southeastern Conference and were terrific and really kind of matching each other pitch for pitch. And um, they played great defense like, you know, Arkansas can. And, uh, you know, there's a couple when you when you're so uh, when when hits are at a premium. Uh, you know, you know, some plays by Moore and others, you know, that shut down innings, Stovall and Wallace at third and some double plays they turned uh, to kind of squelch out, you know, what what rallies you had, right? Rallies were if you had a guy on today. And um, but I uh, thought super, super game. We got a couple of huge hits by by Kevin and uh, and uh, Calvin Harris, you know, uh, the, the timely hit that we talk about so much. But, uh, you know, the story of the day was, uh, you know, Dylan, just, you know, legendary performance. Yes, it was. Questions for the student athletes, and we'll start here with John. Hey, Dylan, um, John Sokoloff, WCBI-TV down in Columbus. Your, your coach just said it was a legendary performance. I mean, what was working so well for you, uh, for you today? Uh, I thought I didn't really have command of my fastball that well until later on in the game, but I was commanding the slider so well. So we just stuck with it, throwing it for first pitch strike, throwing it late in the count, um, but just attacked him at the end of the day. Okay. Uh, Tim and Kevin Austin Elders with the Rebel Walk. Tim, you in particular, this is why you came back to Ole Miss to play for a national championship for both of you in your senior years. Just talk about the emotions and what it feels like to be playing for a national championship this weekend. Uh, I mean, the emotions are uh, are great. You know, we're we're excited to get to play in uh, the national championship series, and um, like you said, yeah, this is why we came back. And uh, you know, we we knew that this team had the potential, and obviously, you know, we had a little bit of a rough patch there in the middle, but. Um, through and through, we always knew that if we just kept believing and stuck together, um, you know, we could be right here. So uh, excited to get to play this weekend. Yeah, you know, just so, so proud of everybody. Calvin, uh, big day today, but you know, all the guys, fun group of guys to be around. I think that's a big reason why we had the turnaround. Okay, we'll start over here. Michael Katz, Daily Journal. Dylan, was, was there any, uh, any doubt for you that you were going to finish this thing? Uh, I just stayed with it. I didn't even just looked up. I saw all those zeros going into the eighth, and I was just like, it's my time to finally finish this game. Okay, right here. Uh, Jake Thompson, Ole Miss Spirit, uh, for Tim and Kevin. Just when playing behind Dylan in a game like this, just what is what are y'all's emotions and just the confidence you have in him, especially what he's done this week? Oh, yeah, I mean, just, just so much confidence. Uh, you know, as you can see, he can just put on quite the pitching performance and, uh, you know, just just gets the outs one after the other. And uh, so we have a lot of confidence playing behind him. You know, we obviously can make some plays behind him, but, um, you know, he takes care of a lot of it. So uh, just hats off to him. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a better pitching performance in a, in a clutch game like that. So uh, just really proud of him and really proud of how the whole team played today. Kevin? Yeah, you know, he makes it easy on us, keeps us in a rhythm. Uh, he's filling it up. That makes it a lot easier playing defense when you know you, uh, he's going to be around the zone and, and keeping you in it. Okay, Nick. Nick Suss with the Clarion Ledger. Dylan, what kind of prep went into today on short rest, and did you come into the day thinking you had nine innings in your arm, or how much did you think you had to give today? Uh, I just went out there just going to put as much zeros as I can. I mean, last time uh, me and Nolan had this matchup again, uh, so it was cool to have – Ace versus ace again. I mean, Nolan's a great pitcher. Uh, last time it was a dogfight. This time it was a dogfight. So it was just really cool to have that again. Okay. Andrew. Andrew Hutchison, hogbeat.com. This is for Tim and Kevin. What, what made Connor so difficult today, and, and what did you see from him? I mean, he just he had all of his pitches working. Um, 
you know, he's had that curveball working, his, his cutter, and, uh, you know, would, would throw the fastball in there, too, to keep you off balance. Uh, you know, just hats off to him. He, he pitched really well and, um, you know, kept us kept us on our toes. And, uh, you know, we were just able to uh, put enough of a couple innings together to uh, get those big hits from Kev and Calvin and, um, you know, score a couple runs. And, um, you know, he, he pitched really well. Uh, but, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, Delusha just, uh, you know, kept us in it the whole time and put up all those zeros. So um, just proud of how we all played. Yeah. yeah, that was an incredible outing by Nolan. Um, yeah, he was really sharp, mixing it up with that fastball cutter, uh, mixing in the big breaker, tunneling that thing well. Um, just one of those days you knew how to take care, take care of your opportunities when you got them because there weren't going to be many of them. Okay, we got somebody back here. Uh, Ellie French, KTV Omaha. Dylan, can you just describe kind of what this journey has been like for you personally this season from not being you know, part of the starting rotation to now starting today and getting the win? Uh, it's been interesting, a fun ride. Uh, Coach B always says, enjoy the ride. And that's what we've been doing. That's what I've been doing, just taking every chance I get, uh, kind of running away with it, um, just not looking back. But I mean, this team has just played so well uh, the last couple of weeks, and we turned it on so far. OK, Rick. Uh, Rick Cleveland, Mississippi Today. Kevin, I wanted to ask you about two things. One. The play you made in the second inning seemed like that ball carried forever, and then, and then you're at bat in the fourth inning. Yeah, on that ball <clears throat> hit by Moore, I wasn't really sure if the wind was going to push that thing all the way back because, uh, I mean, you never really know how it's going to play out there and left. But I just tried not to drift, turn my back and run and make a play. But that bat in the fourth, um, you know, I know no one likes to get ahead. He was going to try to pump in strike one there, and I figured that was going to be my best chance to, to do some damage on him. And he happened to leave a cutter just a little bit up uh, that I was able to get enough of. OK, any more questions for the student athletes? Congratulations, guys. We'll see you this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. OK. If you anything else, Mitch and Alex can take care of you. <laughs> Stay loose. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that with him. <laughs> okay, questions from Mike, John. And Mike, uh, John Sokolop, WCBI TV in Columbus, Mississippi. I mean, you just made program history for this team. I mean, what are the emotions like with you right now, uh, considering that? Just, uh, just proud, you know, proud, you, you, John, you know, our story as well as anybody. And, um, you know, I think as, as we continue to, to win games and, and move forward, um, you know, it, it was neat. A lot of people have the goal to be here, right? Uh, you know, one of the challenges that we talked about was to not just come here, but to win, you know, that, that this isn't a bowl where, you know, years from now, people know that you want to a bowl, but they don't know if you won or lost, right? You went to the Gator Bowl or Sugar Bowl or whatever. Uh, this is a tournament that, you know, like basketball, you're, you know, you're supposed to win and move on. And uh, just proud that, you know, they continue to believe in one another. They've played well. Like, you know, yesterday was tough. You know, when I sat up here, you know, some, you might have asked a question. I wasn't sure um, at the time because you could see they were pretty down last night when we went out to left field. That's to be expected because, you know, it was bases loaded and I'm sure, you know, uh, the players and the Ole Miss faithful, right, in the stands and all the fans that we've had here were thinking some ball's going to you know, squeak through an infielder's, you know, hole and, you know, we were going to win a game. Uh, we didn't. And so to be able to bounce back and, and play like this today, another tough one, you know, um, and that was one of the challenges we said this morning that nobody said it was going to be easy, right? It's not supposed to be easy. And, uh, you know, you got to be tough enough to handle it. And, uh, you know, maybe and I, somebody asked, and it might have been you last night, maybe some of that April you know, toughened us, you know, weathered us a little bit to be able to handle, you know, last night and be able to bounce back today. Get back over here first. Travis Davidson, KREF Sports Talk 1400. Uh, first, congrats on the win and uh, birth Thank in the you. championship series. Uh, I know you've been focused on Arkansas, but can you give me some initial thoughts on uh, your championship series opponent, Skip Johnson um, and the Sooners? You know, uh, 
I I don't know much about them. You know, they're on the other side. I've I've watched some of the some of the games. You know, in, innings, not you know, uh, in their entirety. I, you know, I have some work to do over the next you know 36 hours. Uh, we all do. You know, the coaches. Uh, the great the great thing is with technology today, we 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 can you know get that done. Uh, I know that they you know, they've had a terrific year, uh, especially similar maybe to us. You know, maybe not as big a hole, but one that you know they've. Played Played their best baseball down the stretch, you know, winning a Big 12 tournament, um, and then going to Gainesville, where we all know it's very difficult to win and to win there, and then win another Super Regional on the road. Um, they've they've had a similar path, uh, you know, to us. So we know they they're weathered and tough, uh, you know, to get to this point. And they played really well, and uh, uh, so you know that's that's about all I can do as far as the the scouting report. Okay, right here. Chase Parham, Rivals.com. Mike, uh, you had Malich ready, obviously. Did you check on Dylan at any point? Was it a decision after the eighth or anything? I, uh, I When I went out, I guess it was the seventh when I had some traffic um, and we, we made the error. And again, it was, uh, wasn't going to take him out at that point. Uh, wanted, I wanted him to face Slavens, uh, you know, with the breaking ball. Um, and you know, asked him if he was okay, and he said, "Yeah, I'm fine." And another one where, hey, this you know, just kind of check his emotions, kind of give you know, get him back, you know, grounded in you know what what how we wanted to to approach you know Slavens at bat and what we were going to do. Um, and of course, you know, he throws a good slider, first pitch gets off the field, um, and then af after that, you know. Um, uh, I felt in my heart that if we got to the ninth, it, it would be Brandon Johnson. You know, uh, Brandon's been the guy that's closed the games, the close games. You know, um, and as good as you know, Maltz has been, uh, you know, I was going to go with Johnson. You know, at, at the end, just because he's been terrific. You know, it's not his fault that we've won. You know, by some spreads, and he hasn't been in the games. Um, but earlier would have been in the eighth. It would have been Mallet. So uh, they were on go, but he just ran through it six up, six down. I think you know, and uh, there was really uh, no reason to, to 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 make a move. I didn't think he was just you know he was too good. Uh, he just you know didn't look like he was you know taxing himself. He didn't look like he was running counts. He just looked like he was in total control. Okay, Michael. Michael Katz, Daily Journal. Um, Mike, that's not if you guys have only got nine runs uh, in the four games here. Can you just talk a little bit about the pitching performances that you guys have gotten here? Yeah, well, I, I think very similar to the way we've kind of made the run, um, you know, in postseason and even the SEC tournament. The loss against Vanderbilt, I thought, you know, we, you know, Dylan pitched great. A uh, couple mistakes, and you know, they they made him pay for it. So we've pitched it well, you know, for for over a month now. And, um, you know, one of the things is our guys have really attacked the strike zone, you know, another game, you know, with, with no walks today, um, you know, and, and when you get good starts like Dylan and Hunter, uh, but even Gaddis, you know, last night, I mean, Gaddis, you know, gets you know through the fifth inning with a couple runs. Um, you know, the starters have been terrific. We know the bullpen, how, how good they've been. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think on the front end and the back end, we've, we've really pitched it well. Okay, Parrish. Parrish, all for Daily Journal, Tupelo. Mike, how does uh, Dylan's performance compare with Drew Pomeran's performance in 2009? Well, um, similar. Bigger, you know, you know bigger stage, obviously. Um, you know, that, that was a, a regional final. Uh, but, you know, that was at home, school record strike and strikeouts, I think, 16 on two days rest you know, complete game. So, you know, very similar. But when you start, you know, uh, splitting hairs and you're comparing yourself to Drew Pomerantz, you know, like a 10-year big leaguer, that's pretty good from a guy from Daytona Beach. They're different kinds of pitchers. <coughs> yes. Reach this kind of <coughs> needing to advance, having to get to the next level. Is it better <coughs> to be the Dylan DeLucia style or the power style of Pomerantz? Uh, <coughs> I don't know if there's – a, a better way to get through it. I mean, they're, they show you that there is different ways. Um, you know, uh, you know, Drew's more of a power guy, fastball, hard breaking ball. You know, Dylan's three pitches. You know, and it's you don't know what's coming, and it's on you know each side of the plate and totally flooding the strike zone, uh, and can keep the pitch count you know really down. 
You know, he can get some. And I thought that was one of the differences today. Uh, he threw a lot of, which he can. He's got a lot of arm side run, and sometimes it can play almost like a sinker. He throws these fastballs that are like at the knees. And he was getting a lot of ground ball outs today, a lot of choppers. You know, uh, so, yeah, the, the answer to your question, I don't know if there's a better way. <laughs> They're per both pretty darn good. Back here. Uh, Evan Bland, Omaha World Herald coach going into the championship series now what's what's the challenge or the approach to managing a pitching staff in a best two out of three as opposed to maybe a single game well you know um i, I don't know if you want to get too far into you know playing in the three games especially when you've it's tournament like you know meaning we we just played four games and so uh, unlike a weekend series now oklahoma may have more of that you know where you know they're going to play more straight up like they um you know, weekend series just because, you know, the way the pitching will set up. Ours obviously is different. We'll meet, you know, as a staff tomorrow and, and kind of try to, you know, game plan, a, a, you know, uh, how, to, how to navigate through, uh, you know, the, the three days. Um, so a little different for, for us, but uh, I, I, proverbial, you know, one game at a time and you try to win the first one and go, go from there. I mean, you're playing for a national championship and, and so you, you, you don't want to leave any, you know, anything on the table. You want to go for it. Okay, Andrew. Andrew Hutchison, hogbay.com. Coach, considering both guys were on short rest, did you anticipate that Dylan and Connor both would be perform like this? Or did you kind of have a feeling that uh, it, it would – or did you think it would be – play out like that? I did. I mean, I, I don't know if I thought it would be 2-0, but I thought both of them would probably get deep in the game. Um, I, I thought uh, – uh, yeah, it's which one you know could get to the bullpen, especially with the wind blowing in. You know, today a little different than, than yesterday. Yesterday, you know, uh, as I mentioned, it, it was blowing in, but – I mean, Slavin's hit one. I've never seen a ball hit like that here. Uh, and not taking anything away from him, but that that wouldn't have happened today. You know, uh, no, would it have got out? I don't know, but not like it did. And so it kind of, kind of, kind of looked like it. You know, uh, added up to what it was going to be a you know a pitching day with both Friday night guys. And you say short rest. I mean, it you know wasn't. We're not that bad. It's on Thursday. They pitched on Saturday. I mean, it wasn't as Parrish was talking about Pomerantz on two days rest. So, um, yeah, I thought both of them would probably get deep into the game. Okay, Mike. Mike Rooney, D1 Baseball. Mike, the ground balls in the eighth and the ninth, given the, you know, the intensity of the two-game series and the environment, the pressure, I mean, Bench and Peyton were, it's like they were in an inter-squad game and no one told them this yeah, was. Bench's throw? Yeah, I mean, he like caught it back on the back foot and just like threw it up. Yeah, like it was yeah, pregame like in and out. it was in, in between out. innings, yeah. So is that, is that because Dylan, they're so confident playing behind him? Is it because these kids are such veterans? Or if you had to point, pinpoint that calmness, those are tough plays yeah. with, with the National Championship Series on the line. Well, how would you pinpoint that? I think it's a combination, Runes, of, of all of that. I think, you know, one, you're talking about older guys that have, that have won a lot of games here. You know, uh, guys like Bench and Chatney and, you know, you look over at Elko, guys that, you know, Graham that was up here. So, you know, a group that uh, has, has been in a lot of fights, have been in, you know, maybe they haven't been to Omaha, but, man, they've been in some super regional dog fights. And um, so I think that's part of it, I think, experience. And I think the other part is uh, just how loose and confident they, they are. And, uh, you know, at this point, you know, knowing that they can make plays. Uh, and then lastly, what you, uh, I think, pointed to, is uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get those ground balls with Lou on the mound. I mean, uh, you got to be ready. And so uh, another reason why uh, you know, we kind of we've been playing with the McCants Woods uh, uh, Wood, excuse me, uh, third base, you know, center field, but you know, a little better defensive, you know, uh, lineup today with with the McCants in center and, and bench at third. Okay, Nick, this will be our last question for Mike. Nick Suss with the Clarion Ledger. Mike, I saw you and Laugh kind of had a moment there after yeah. the game. You, Laugh, Clem have been together for so long. What does it just mean for you and these coaches you've been with forever to be right. playing for a championship? Just so cool. You know, they uh, uh, a lot of you know, special na you know, national media, I, I, and this is not throwing stones, but I don't know why, you know, they don't get more credit than they do. I mean, they're, they're, this is the best staff that we've ever had, uh, and we've had some great ones.
you know, we've had some great coaches come through, but I, I don't remember ever having uh, and feel as comfortable as I do with, with my guys. Uh, and, you know, Laugh's the longest tenured assistant coach in the Southeastern Conference. I mean, he's been with me since 2006. He played for me my first year in 2001. So, um, you know, just, just a cool moment. You, you, you work so hard. It's all about the players. Your question was asked, you know, so it is. This is their moment, uh, and, you know, you never want to, you know, um, take away from that. But this is what we do for a living, and uh, it's, it's, it's great. We're so blessed to do it, uh, but it's not easy, and it's a lot of hard hours. And, you know, we've talked so much about this year. You know, that's, that's our year, too. You know, and um, and so you know to get to this moment's pretty cool. You know, uh, you know, in, in in your occupation. Again, Mike will be back with us tomorrow morning, uh, about approximately eleven thirty. Oklahoma will be first, and then a photo op. Get to do that. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.